All right, ladies and gentlemen, so in this video, we're going to look into an example of carbon dating. All right, now we're not going to talk about too much of the science um, behind it all and everything being a calculus class, but we are going to look into um, how to uh, relate it to some uh, pre-calculus and calculus topics. So if you want to know a little bit more about carbon dating, uh, or carbon-14 dating, there's actually a, a, kind of an interesting little article on page 354 in your book that talks a little bit more about um, the history behind it and kind of what's the purpose. Um, so we're going to dive into that a little bit. Let's take a look. The scientists who use carbon-14 dating use 5,700 years for its half-life. Find the age of a sample in which 10% of the radioactive nuclei originally present have decayed. All right, so we want to model this exponential growth, all right, or excuse me, this exponential decay in a specific base. Now, I will say there is multiple ways to solve this problem. We can use our regular exponential e as a base for a possibility. However, doing so does require us to take a little bit of an extra step. So what I would like to do instead is to think about a base that we can use in this kind of concept that we've been looking at the last couple of videos of choosing a different base other than e that will help us out out. Well, think about it. If we're saying... How long, all right, is the half-life? Well, what do you think our base is going to focus on? It took half, all right, times your original amount to get to X, Y, and Z, right? And so we're going to use that base of a half. And so we're going to model it in this case as A equals A naught times one half of T over 5,700. All right, and so let's take it a little bit step further though. But in this example, we want the value of T in which 10% of the radioactive nuclei has decayed. Well, think about it. At this point, A, 100% a of it has gone through its half-life, right? That's kind of what the concept of A is here. And so we would write, all right, 100% as just 1 times A, okay? Well, if I want 10%, Right? If I want 10% of the original all right, radioactive nuclei present has already been gone, well then technically it's 1 minus my 10% times A equals A naught times 1 half T5700. Okay? But technically on the left hand side of my, um, of my equation here, it really should be A not or a sub zero in this case because it's 100% minus the tenth percent of your original a not and that would have given you your a and so that's why we take our one minus one or ten percent or point one zero and end up getting point nine times your original original contribution of a not equals a naught times one half to the t over 5700 power. Well, now once again, our a our a naughts are going to cancel on out, so we get 0.9 equals one half times our to the t over 5700 power. We're going to natural log both sides, keep that t down, so we'll have natural log of 0.9 equals t over 5700 times the natural log of one half multiply by 5,700 on both sides to get that fraction out of there. And then we're going to see in the end that we have 5,700 times the natural log of 9 equals T times the natural log of 1 half. Or T in the end will be 5,700 times the natural log of 0.9 divided by the natural log, we'll call it 0.5 to keep the decimals the same. And then, in uh, simplifying this out in the calculator, we roughly get about 866. So, in, to interpret this, all right, the sample would be about 866 years old, in which 10% of the radioactive nuclei originally present has decayed. Okay, so it took about 866 years for 10% of that nuclei to actually decay. All right, and so there's another little example of uh, using our growth, exponential growth and decay with a different base other than our exponential. 
and we are on to the next one.